Here's an interesting fact about some cast-ons. I say I know 40 cast-ons, but really a lot of what it is is how you count. Let's take a simple provisional cast-on. Are you familiar with Elizabeth Zimmerman's provisional cast-on? It starts with two yarns held together. In this case, or my case, one of the yarns is a creamy cotton and the other is our wool. You make a loop out of both and you slip it onto your needle and this does not count as a stitch. You position the yarns so that the cotton is parallel to the needle and then you pick up a stitch with the wool, pick up a stitch the other side with the wool, pick up with a wool, and what you want to do is you want to make sure to keep the cotton unkinked or as unkinked as possible by loosening the tension on your wool so that you have a straight line of cotton that runs parallel to your wool. There's another, uh, to your needle. So there is another stitch and there's another stitch. And we can see the creamy cotton is remaining sort of parallel and we're picking up stitches. This is the Elizabeth Zimmerman provisional cast on with a waist yarn. It's a fairly easy cast on to do. It's very popular. There are many other demonstrations of Elizabeth Zimmerman's cast on. There are some disadvantages to this cast on and let's turn the work around and see what some of the disadvantages are. The main disadvantage is that your stitches are mounted in different directions. This first stitch is pretty easy to knit into. It looks like um, a standard knit stitch and you just would at this point let's do this to make things easy let's just cut our waist yarn so it's out of our way and then we can just take and hold the waist yarn which holds the stitch in place in our left hand twist the wool over it so that there's a slight twist and then we start knitting we knit into the front of the first stitch but we need to knit to the back of the second stitch um, to do with this. And then we purl into the front, and then we knit into the back, and then we purl into the front. Or we can knit into every stitch, but we need to knit the back of this stitch, and the front of this stitch, and the back of this stitch, and the front of this stitch. I do that very, very easily because I'm a combo knitter and I'm used to just knitting my stitches as they lie. However, if you're not a combination knitter, you might find it awkward and inconvenient and might want to turn your switches round to be able to knit into them. The double loop is not counted as a stitch. Our cotton yarn at the bottom holds a series of loops and these series of loops could be picked up with another needle and knit. I'm not going to bother picking it up now, but you do see you do have a series of loops in the cotton yarn and that's what makes your provisional cast on. So that's a pretty simple cast on. It's a good one to know. But let's see some of the things that we can do with this cast on. I'm going to get rid of this little bit of waste yarn and we're going to start again with another piece of waste yarn. And again we're going to tie the two together and make a slip stitch and put the slip stitch on our needle. Now, we know the movement that we've made to do the cast on, but let's see what this translates into when we're working. You'll notice the movement is actually identical to the movement used for our Italian cast on. The difference is the tension on the cotton is held differently. But if we continue to make the same movement, and, and and change the tension. Let's try that again. We continue to make the same movement. We go under and pick up this, and we go under and pick up this. What we've now done is taken the provisional stitches that were on the waist yarn and put them on the needle. So Easy's provisional cast on is really the same, and if I undid these stitches, and loosen them, I could actually turn, uh, you can see how the, the stitch that would normally be the provisional is now onto the needle. So the easy cast on and the Italian cast on both really use the same movements and they're basically the same cast on. It's the same way of creating two things. 
And this same process is used in another cast-on. The magic cast-on uses the same motions, only instead of putting the, and let's actually, let's get rid of the waist yarn. The magic cast-on starts with two strands of yarn, only in this case one is a long tail and one is a ball. It puts a stitch on the needle, and then we hold the two needles together, and we do the same thing. We pick up one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom. The bottom needle gets the top yarn, the top needle, oop, sorry, I moved out of focus there. The top needle gets the bottom yarn, the bottom needle gets the top yarn, and we've done the same cast on, and we've spread it over two needles. So, the same motion with a single needle is this motion, and we put both stitches onto one needle, or we can put both stitches onto two needles. Here's our same motion, watch the needles, up and down, up and down, up and down, which is the same motion that we used for the easy cast on. So, the same motion, the same process, the same winding of yarns creates three different cast-ons. This magic cast-on is useful for starting a toe when you want to go starting to knit in the round almost immediately. Easy is for provisional, and Italian is for tubular. Three different processes to create the same effect. Amazing, isn't it?